Hello, and welcome back to The Grunt Perspective. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going through my belt setup. Um, so this is the third, fourth, fifth, sixth or seventh time I've done a belt setup video on the channel. And uh, to some of you guys, it might seem like I'm just trying to rinse and repeat the same shit. Um, that's not the case, right? Uh, I am trying to continually evolve my stuff and make it to the point where I'm like, it's like perfect. Um, in addition, like there's different types of setups that I would use for different types of things. So if that's how you're feeling, then uh, just know whatever that that's, that that's what I'm doing. Uh, I guess if that's what you think, I'm not going to change your mind about it, but either way, that's how I think about it. And that's why I continue to make videos about belt setups and plate carrier setups and all kinds of stuff. Um, now, why, why have I changed my belt setup? Um, if you don't give a shit about any of this stuff, just look in the description. I'm going to talk for a little bit and then, and then I'll point or, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what time I start just going through the belt here. Right. But why, why did I change this is, uh, the main reason is because, uh, one, well, there's a couple of reasons. One, I wanted a more comfortable type of belt setup. I've been using a two piece belt for like five or six years at this point. And I've used a lot of different types of inner belts to some, some more success than other belts. Um, but overall I was just kind of getting some hot spots that I had been getting the same hot spots for years at this point. And I wanted that to stop happening. I wanted a more comfortable belt setup. And two, the if you saw my last video on a belt you would have seen that i had this fucking huge butt pack back here and i had a bunch of stuff in there that i was trying to keep on my person all the time like some important things some survival equipment things like that some emergency type gear and my idea with that was i'm gonna have this stuff on me all the time and i executed that poorly because I put it on my belt, which, you know, if you're in the infantry and you're using the like American style packs that have a hip belt that actually goes around your waist here, then you know that those types of belts are kind of impossible to wear with a rucksack on with any sort of comfort. So what I was doing is when I was wearing my rucksack, I was taking that belt off and I was putting it on my rucksack. Um, which is what most people do. And the problem was all that shit that I deemed so important that I wanted to have on my person is now not on my person um, for a large majority of what I'm doing. And I, I kind of like just defeated the whole purpose by, by doing that. So I wasn't happy with that. I basically just had a really heavy belt that I had to carry on top of my rucksack and it, wasn't really doing me a whole lot of good unless I was actually wearing it. Um, you know, if I'm in a situation, I need to ditch my pack or something like that, or, you know, come into chance contact. I put my shit down, go fight, right. I'm not going to have time to pull that shit off. I'm not going to have time to put it on. So I wanted to have that kind of stuff on, on, on my person, which is where this comes in. Um, so this is a spiritist fanny sack. And I slimmed down a lot of the shit that, that, that was in there. And I tried to keep it down to just the most important stuff that I think I'm going to want to have with me to get me to someone else or to allow me to buy enough time for someone to come to me. And this is what I got inside here. Um, so this is a rifle maintenance kit. Uh, it's kind of an emergency rifle maintenance kit though. And if you're unfamiliar with the concept, that's okay. Cause I was too, until someone taught, taught me about it. It was a British in, in, infantryman. Um, so if that's you, then thank you. But this is just shit to fix my rifle in the event I have some sort of problem that I can't fix with like your normal drills, right? Uh, so I have some rods inside here for a stuck casing. I have a ruptured case extractor. If I get a ruptured casing, I have a brush, a bottle of lube and a rag. Um, how likely are you to see some of those malfunctions? 
Well, it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on how clean your rifle is, how well you've been taking care of it and things like that. It could also depend on just ammunition, right? Um, I've really seen only a handful of those, of, of those types of malfunctions uh, in the time that I've been in the Marine Corps. Uh, so that being said, I've seen it. I know it can happen. So that gives me enough reason to carry it. Even if it's not going to be necessarily my gun, it could be someone around me. It could be someone within my squad, my platoon or something like that, that has that sort of problem that obviously needs to get fixed. Uh, you know, we can't just take it to the armory when we're out like doing operational stuff. Right. So having a little bit of those tools on you, I think is important. And that, and, and that's why I keep it on my person. Um, this is a small survival kit, some tape, some tinder quicks, a lighter, a space blanket or a casualty blanket, some water bags and some water purification tablets, something small, light, um, depending on your environment and things like that, like that might not be enough to get you through, right? My environment, that's going to be okay for me. Uh, but that's going to be a, an assessment that you might need to make. Uh, then I got a little bit of food and the old main meal um, and a little bit of 550 cord, right? Just because you can always use 550 cord for something. Um, that's all I keep inside there uh, on the subject of how I actually use this thing. Um, so this stays around my waist pretty much all the time. Now, I am not a fan of wearing a belt and a fanny pack. I think it's ridiculous. I don't know why anyone does it. Uh, I really, it's just not comfortable for me. And maybe it's just a me thing, but I'm just not a fan. So I wear this around, around my waist when I have my rucksack on. And when I would put my belt on, assuming, you know, I'm going out on a patrol or something like that, this would get put either in my patrol pack or on the back of my plate carrier in that like back panel type pouch if I'm not taking a salt pack or something like that. So something like this. So it's always on me, but it's not, you know, attached to a piece of gear that I'm not always wearing. Um, so that's kind of how I use that. That's really the main change and what made this whole change here. And that's kind of what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, it's a spiritist fanny sack containing whatever you deem necessary for your, your situation and environment. Um, now a little bit about the belt itself. So this is a one piece belt. This is a T-Rex arms Orion belt. And just like I've been saying after years and years of using two piece belts, I wanted something a little more comfortable. I wanted something that still, still allowed me to carry the same stuff, but in a more comfortable and easier to use package, right? There's a couple drawbacks to both types of belts, right? Like with your two piece belt, you know, it's more complicated. I'm sure that you guys know someone who has forgot their inner belt to their belt. And then, you know, it's just useless. You just put it around your waist and it acts just like a fucking war belt. Um, so easier to use. It's more comfortable. All of these are benefits that I wanted. Um, now, the main problem with these like war belt type belts or like a one piece belt is most of them are absolutely terrible at staying where you want them to stay. They turn, they shift up and down, they move all over the place, they get in your fucking way, and you try to pull a magazine out, you rip your whole belt up, and it's just unpleasant to use, which is why most people go to two-piece belts. Um, now, this belt, this black stuff that's on the inside of it, it's kind of tacky to the touch, like it's kind of sticky. And T-Rex Arms advertise this as like it sticks to your clothes and stays in place. And I'll be honest, the first time I saw that advertising, I was like, there's no fucking way. That's stupid. Uh, that is never going to work. Um, but I had the opportunity to sprint, to, you know, do some drills, to do some reloads, to get uh, in the knee, in the prone, and get up and down and do my tactical burpees and shit. And, um, it stayed put. It did exactly what it said it was going to do. And it stayed exactly where I wanted it. Uh, I was very surprised when I was doing reloads off the belt, um, with this insert inside the pouch too, because it's, it's pretty strong or it holds the magazine very tightly. Belt stayed com completely rock solid. 
Uh, so that is very cool and I like it quite a lot. And I think that for anyone who is using a two piece belt now, or you're feeling the hot spots, you're feeling the uncomfortable stuff with that, that comes with it. You're probably wanting to get a one piece belt. You just know that all of them are terrible because you've used a war belt at some point in your entry level training. This is a really good way to go or, or, or something like this that has this type of system to it. Something that sticks to your clothes, right? This even has some Velcro one wrap that they advertise this as like, you can still wear a normal inner belt and this will stick to it. Not a lot of connection there, right? I, I don't know if that's gonna work as well, but even without that, it stays exactly where you want it. So if you're looking for a one piece belt, again, it's great. Just look for something that has some sort of technology like this that's gonna keep it put where you want it to be. Um, so the belt itself, uh, Orion belt, like I said, this is one of their older ones. Their newer ones are a little bit different in the way that the Molly is done. For this one, every two rows of Molly is sewn together. So like two, 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 right? Um, on the newer ones, it's just one singular row. And if you want, you have the ability to pull the inner belt out in between those rows to do whatever you might need to do. Um, one of the big drawbacks to a one to a one piece belt, though, is they are usually not very good at hanging a pistol off of just because this inner belt, while it can be replaced, is not as rigid as a two piece belt. Obviously, uh, most two most two piece belts are either made of some really thick webbing or they have. Excuse me, or or they have like some tigris or something like that. That's that's there like to reinforce the belt, so you can really hang a pistol off it very sturdy. Um, now that's not really a problem because most infantrymen don't use pistols. We have some guys who do, um, the machine gunners, the designated marksmen, those guys. But like most grunts are not running around with pistols as of now. Right. Uh, it might be something that comes in the future, but as of now, most dudes are not. So it's really not a capability that I needed and that most people don't necessarily need. Um, but yeah, that is kind of the benefits and the drawbacks to both types of systems. Another option, if you're a guy that needs to carry a pistol or a 320 or something like that on your belt, uh, so you want a two piece belt is to get some sort of a padded inner belt. There's not a lot of them on the market. I got one from Hercules Tactical. There's a few other ones and that was very comfortable. That was a good way to do that. So if that is you, then that is an option as well. Now, with all that being said, um, I'll start talking about the belt itself. So the inner belt here is a, is a Cobra buckle closure. Uh, you have the ability to take this whole belt out and put whatever belt that you think you might need on the inside of it. So if you need something load rated, which I think that this is, I'm not sure though, but if you need something load, like load rated, you can do that. If you want to put something that's extremely rigid, you can do that, right? Uh, you can put whatever belt you want inside of this like Molly sleeve thing. Um, on the front, on both sides, you have some permanently attached, uh, HK hooks to hang various things from. I got my gloves on this side, just some mechanics fast fit gloves. This side could be used for whatever you need. A lot of guys like to do chem lights up there, so you could do that. Still have a way to uh, attach your gloves, which is a really nice feature because on most belts, you have to pay for some sort of loop with an HK hook on it to attach to your belt, and that's just more money that you don't need to spend, right? So right there, you got the hooks, you got the, you got the inner belt that you can change out for, uh, for whatever you want. Um, on the front of both sides here, I have a frag grenade pouch. Uh, frag grenades, obviously there's something that's absolutely essential for infantrymen. Um, I like to keep them where I can access them both. Some units have some SOPs and things like that, that like they put some on the back of their belt or on the back of their plate carrier. I've never been a fan of that. I would rather just be able to access both of my own grenades. But you know, if you got an SOP that you've already like, already like worked out and things like that, then you know, all the power to you. 
Uh, on the subject of frag, of frag grenade pouches, a lot of people like to put a lot of types of different stuff. See, it's fake. A lot of people like to put a lot of types of shit inside their frag grenade pouches, like dip cans and compasses and headlamps and shit like that. Uh, try not to do that because you're going to get used to that. You're going to get used to having that space to put that item. And then when you actually need to carry frags, you're going to have nowhere to put it. And you're going to look like a look like a private that's got two DOS worth of chow inside his cargo pockets. And that's obviously not cool, right? So um, try to keep them empty unless you have frags, right? If you have an item that you need to carry, then you need to carry it in, an, in another spot. Um, right here... I have a BDS pouch with a flashlight. This is a Streamlight fucking ProTac 2LX. Uh, it takes two, one, two, three batteries or one AA. So that's pretty cool. It's a, it's a pretty cheap flashlight, um, but I don't need a super crazy flashlight. Uh, to be honest, most of what I use that flashlight for is for administrative type tasks, like trying to count things or trying to find stuff that someone failed the dummy cord, something like that, right? Uh, so not the most combat-oriented thing. There are some uses for a handheld flashlight, you know, if you want to look inside a small space or something like that, but you don't necessarily need to point a gun at something. Um, that's a solid use for it, but, you know, it, I don't know, you can make your own decision based off of there. Um, something that I would replace it with if I choose to, if, if I choose to take it off would be a tourniquet. Uh, just right there in between the frag pouch and uh, the gist pouch here. Just a useful thing to have on the belt. I've already got two tourniquets on my plate carrier, which is usually SOP in most places to have two. Uh, but, you know, if I wanted to carry a third, then I could put it right there. But for the meantime, I'm probably going to keep the flashlight on there. Um, working this way, Spiritus gist pouch uh, Inside the pouch, I have the Wise Men Company, the 1R1 insert for one rifle magazine and a pistol magazine. Uh, I keep a multi-tool inside there um, just because, just like I was saying, I don't really need to carry a pistol. So why would I need to carry pistol mags? Um, but yeah, it goes in there. You can put this insert in either direction. So if you want the mag here or you want the mag here, I had to switch it on this specific belt to put the mag in the back because it played better with my plate carrier like that. So that's a cool feature. Uh, but yeah, just the one rifle magazine. I usually only keep one mag on my belt. I've played around with putting more, but one mag is usually all I need. I carry the majority of my mags on my plate carrier. Um, the GP pocket here, only thing I really keep in here is a headlamp. Uh, that's the only thing that's in there all the time. But the reason I have this is because it's a great pouch to put other things like knickknacks and trinkets and all kinds of other crap, right? Uh, it's just nice to have a open pouch on your gear that you could use for whatever you might need. Extra 152 battery, two smoke grenades can fit inside there. You could throw some, throw a couple frag grenades inside there, right? Um, can do whatever you might need with that pouch. I found it extremely useful to have that space uh, because space on the belt is, is obviously very limited. So having some extra space has been very useful. Uh, on the inside here, you have a sleeve pocket you can use for whatever you might need. I usually would put uh, a chem light insert inside there from Axel Advanced. Um, I don't use it all the time. That's why I took it out. Uh, but you could do that as well. So you could have some chem lights inside that pouch and you could avoid the dangling like bundle of chem lights on the front of your belt, which uh, looks very cool, but I'm not necessarily a fan of. So the gist of pouch, great pouch for a belt. I would, hi I would highly recommend it. Um, this here is a Spiritus YGP. Um, this is my nods pouch, which is a absolutely massive nods pouch, right? Uh, but if you've seen the DZ rig video, you probably know what's going on inside this pouch. So on the front, I have uh, a battery case, four AA's, four one, two threes for anything. 
Uh, these are kind of like emergency batteries. I obviously have a lot more batteries inside of my ruck, but I keep these eight batteries on my kit all the time. And I try to use them as little as possible. The idea being that if I need them, then they are there for me. But if I don't, I kind of just forget about them. Um, good, good thing that everyone should do, but not a lot of people do. Main pocket here, I have my little nods carrying device. So this is a Pelican M60 case. Got the dummy cord. Um, and the reason I have gone to such great lengths to protect my nods is because like one, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Like I'm in the military. What's going to happen to me if I break my nods? I'm going to get more nods, right? That's it. Uh, but breaking your nods in training and breaking your nods in combat is different. Uh, you're going to get more nods eventually, but how long is it going to take? What is the process that needs to go through there, right? So it might take a little bit. So I go to this length to protect my nods. This is just some green isomat foam with some double-sided tape. I put the nods in there flat. I close them inside there, and then the whole box goes inside uh, the pouch back there. Uh, with the size of 31s, um, it's kind of it's kind of hard to find a way to carry them on your body. Uh, I do think that carrying your nods on on your body or on your fighting kit is the correct way to go. You know, even if you're going out for a couple hours and you should be back before it gets dark, things can happen. You can get retasked. You know, all kinds of stuff could potentially happen that that is no longer the case, right? So something like that is uh, the reason why I'm a huge advocate for carrying your nods on your body. A lot of people aren't doing it right now just because of the size of 31s. They're carrying them in their ruck and they're pulling them out when they need them, which is not necessarily wrong, but I don't think it's the most right way to go. So that is why I like to do it. You know, this box, this a Pelican M60 case. I don't know if I already said that. I think so. But it, uh, it keeps them safe from getting crushed. It keeps them safe from water reasonably. It keeps them safe from dust and all kinds of other stuff, right? And it's just too easy to put them inside a box. That way they're nice and secure. They're not going to get crushed. They're not going to get ruined. And I have them on me and it's all safe, right? So that is the reason why I do that. And that is, I think, what a lot of people should do. Uh, find some way to carry your nods on your person because you really do need to have those things with you. Um, IFAC. So this is a Blue Force Gear trauma kit now. Uh, I believe now it's called the medium trauma kit now because they have a bunch of different sizes. But I have an IFAC, some gloves, NPA, Sharpie, a Needle D, some tape, some chest seals, compression bandage, eye cover, uh, some compressed gauze and some combat gauze. Um, just your standard IFAC stuff, right? And of course, I got a, got a little marker there. Um, have, I prefer to have my IFAC on my belt. It's a pretty large pouch to put on your cummerbund. And especially like if you have your IFAC on the back of your cummerbund, then like don't lie to me. I know that that is uncomfortable with a, with a, a rucksack on. So you only really have so much space on the cummerbund, which leaves it to go on the belt unless you do a dangler or something like that, which leads me to my next point. Um, a lot of infantrymen don't, fully comprehend the, the realm and the spectrum of operations that you could do. And they don't set their gear up a, like according to it or have a plan for it. A great example of this is the CBRN training or, you know, in real life, like you're in a, like an environment like that. Obviously you need to have something that you can drink with a gas mask on, which is more than likely your unit is going to tell you to have a canteen with a canteen or with a N, uh, NBC cap. Um, so if I were to need to do that, my canteen would go here and this and the contents would go into a dangler on my, on a, my plate carrier on the front of my plate carrier. Not a huge fan of having a dangler 
Um, I like the small ones. The ones that are large enough to fit a to fit a IFAC are usually annoying for me, but it's not the end of the world and it would be really unfortunate to not have water. So something to think about as you set up your gear is just make sure that you have a way to easily and quickly get yourself like ready to go into whatever that operation is, right? Um, having a canteen on, on your belt is something that I would honestly like to have all the time, NBC training or not. But, you know, I don't have room for it. And if I were to need to do it, then it would go here. And, you know, the IFAC would go elsewhere. Something to think about. Uh, got a bayonet here. OKC3 bayonet, standard issue bayonet. Um, fuck yeah. This is another common thing. Uh, if you are issued a, bay a bayonet, your unit is probably going to want you to carry it on your person. Uh, because it's, you know, equipment that is uh, uh, accounted for, and they're going to want you to have accountability of it. Um, usually, dude's belts or their, or their plate carriers are set up, and then they get thrown a bayonet, and they get told, you need to carry this all the time. And then it just gets put into some goofy-ass spot. Dudes are mauling, like, they're mauling them to, like, the front of their plate carriers with, like, zip ties and shit. And it's just, you know, you should have a place for that to go when you need it, right? Um, that being said as well, it's also a great idea to have a fixed blade knife on you all the time, right? So I got a fixed blade knife that I can put on my gun. And even if I didn't have to carry a bayonet, I would probably still continue to carry it just to have the fixed blade knife. Um, and then the other grenade pouch right there. So all the things that I was talking about advantages and the drawbacks and things like that of a one, a one piece belt or a two piece belt. Um, I think a one piece belt is probably going to be the way to go for most people just due to the comfort and the ease of use. Uh, if you need to carry a pistol or a 320 on your belt, definitely go for a two piece belt with a padded inner belt. If you don't look for something like this, that has some sort of way to keep it like, tight and in the same spot on your body because uh, I'm really in enjoying it and I think you guys probably will too. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.